you know, for some reason, when I thought of this uh, topic of today, uh, an old proverb came to my mind. It's something very interesting and very intriguing. It says, always remember never to use two words. Always and never. Always remember never to use two words. And those two words are always and never. Now you'll ask me what is the connection of this to today's topic. The fact is that there are always people who never remember not to use these uh, words. And you know what they do? They generalize. They have this habit of saying, see, anybody can be critical. Anybody can criticize, particularly when we are talking about close people, people known very well to you or people, you know, who are directly involved in your day to day life. They have a right to criticize you. They have a right to point out your mistakes. They have a right to be very frank and open and tell you, hey, I don't like this or this is not what you should be doing all that. But then there are these people who just sort of make it a sort of obsession, you know, a passion or something very deep where they want to go on and on and on with the same thing in their uh, mind. And this happens in many different areas. It happens even at the national level and in politics and in international affairs and all that, where they go on bombarding. You must have come across no countries which have this great propaganda against some other country and they try to convince the whole world that we are right and you are wrong. And they keep on focusing on that. It happens at that level. It happens in politics. It happens everywhere. There are so many different areas we see all these things are, you know, happening. But my concern, as I always keep telling you, my concern is at the individual level. One to one, human beings, people who are important to us, people who matter to us. Now, in this, we inevitably come across, you know, some people who have this habit of just bombarding you. And that's why I said what, what they do is they use these two words, always. You always do this. You always behave in such and such a uh, manner. You always let me down. You always make mistakes. And they back it up with, you never listen to me. You never do what I tell you. You never understand your mistakes. You never do this as though life is made of, you know, that pure black and white. And that is expressed very well in TA language, transactional analysis, which is one of the psychotherapies, which once upon a time used to be very popular. I don't know why, for whatever reason, it's not all that popular nowadays. But I do have, have very high regard for uh, uh, transactional analysis. It defines the various states of mind. And it also defines how people relate to others. So they put it very simply in four different, you know, attitudes of people. They say, I'm okay, you're okay. So everybody is fine, I'm happy, I'm living a good life, I have good relationships, I feel that the world is a good place. That's the ideal situation. Then there are people, uh, you know, who say, I'm not okay, you are not okay. Everything is bad, nothing works in this world. Whatever efforts we do, it doesn't matter. The whole world is suffering. Everybody is going through miserable time. Our good old days, you know, when life used to be so good, they're all gone. Now nothing is there. That's what we refer to as, I'm not okay, you're not okay. The third is where people say, I am not okay, you are okay. That is, the world is a nice place. People, everybody is good. I am that stupid fellow who doesn't fit in. I keep making mistakes all the time. I am a failure. I've never been able to do good. I've never been able to achieve what I want. I just don't even have the capability of achieving. So why should I even try? So the whole world is good. 
but I am this miserable failure. I am not okay. And you are okay. Whenever I'm saying you, it is everybody else around, right? Then comes the fourth one, which I wanted to talk to you about today, which says, I am okay. You are not okay. That means I am this one perfect human being among the 7 billion which God created, who is the ideal person, who never makes mistakes, who does not do anything wrong, who is super intelligent, who knows the right decisions to take or whatever has to be done. And com complementary to that is the whole world is bad. I'm surrounded by these stupid people. All around I have inefficient people, people who don't understand the basics of life, people who keep making stupid mistakes, people whose attitude itself is wrong. And I'm trying my level best to train them, teach them, convert them, but they don't listen. They don't. They either don't have the capacity to do it or they don't have the willingness to do it. So I have declared that I am this great person. Now those are the people who come onto this that why do you always do this? So they catch hold of somebody who is vulnerable, somebody who is not going to argue, fight and counter them and they start targeting them. It starts with very small uh, things. Remember that it can also be a very loving, caring you know, parent. There are parents, despite good intentions, despite loving their children and despite wanting to give the best to their children, they keep bombarding them with negativity. Why do you always make these stupid mistakes? Why do you always disobey me? Why are you always with your friends or your mobile or whatever? Why is it that you are always making these stupid mistakes and not learning for uh, uh, yourself? So the moment this word always comes in, no? it is like closing all the doors. And if it happens continuously, and that too by important adults, it could be a teacher, it could be a grandparent, it could be a parent. If that person keeps drilling into this growing child that you always make mistakes. See, always is 100%, right? So it does not leave any scope. If I even say nine times out of 10, you have failed. What is the connotation? that one out of 10 times you have passed. And if you can pass once, you can pass second time, third time. So there is this window which is remaining open for me to bring about a change, to do better, to succeed. But if somebody tells me that 10 out of 10 times I have been bad or I have been a failure or I have been negligent, the rubber stamp is put on me and my persona saying that you are not good enough. You cannot do anything worthwhile. You are just incapable. And then what does this person do? The outcomes of that is what I'm going to you know, uh, talk about uh, today. What happens when you have this significant person in your life, whether it happened when you were growing up, when you were a child or an adolescent, or whether it is happening now to you? You have in your life somebody important. It could be a boss, for example, who's perpetually putting you down and not leaving that window open to say that here you did well, but there you did badly. So now it gives you that little motivation. Oh, there I did well, right? So two things. One is I'm capable of doing well. And secondly, can I use the same methodology which I use there so that I can succeed in the other things? See how that criticism can actually become a constructive criticism. But if my boss keeps telling me that you always mess up, you never do things uh, right. Why is it that you just cannot make a basic thing which has been told to you? Why is it that you always muddle up uh, uh, things? 
if that is drilled into me it takes away my inspiration my motivation my desire to do good and my basic self worth because when i start actually believing that i'm not capable of doing it there is a question of my putting in effort to do it more so if it happens you know among very close and what i would define as loved ones somebody in my family somebody who i love dearly somebody who is very important to me who i consider to be somebody whom i look up to or i bond closely with with somebody who is you know part of my life if that person takes up this attitude why do you always do this and underline the word always now there's a very interesting thing first let's uh, sort of very briefly psychoanalyze the person who does these horrible things what makes a person do that what makes a person think i am okay you are not okay that whatever i am saying is always right whatever you are uh, uh, saying is never right you always fail i always pass that attitude it is a basic fundamental thing of what i would call as passing the buck that means i don't want responsibility i don't want to analyze myself i don't want to evaluate how good or bad i am i don't want to bring in the concept of you know how much i am progressing or how much i am succeeding i will perpetually pass the buck and many people do it very successfully the more i keep attacking the other person by saying why do you always do this the other person is caught in a barrage it is like you know i am throwing stones at somebody that other person also has stones which he can throw at me but if i am constantly throwing stones that person starts ducking person starts saving himself the person focus goes on escaping the stones rather than picking up a stone and throwing it back at me so even though the person is capable he has the strength and the ability and the aim to throw a stone at me he has the stones available but because of this perpetual bombardment of stones he is now doing only one thing and that is to protect himself so if i catch hold of somebody and start passing the buck i told you it could be a subordinate or somebody in office it could be somebody at home it could be somebody in my social circles or family but if i decide that i want to pass the buck i am a little insecure i am not very sure you know whether i am doing the right thing and somebody may find out somebody may point out to me that see here you are making a mistake you are not doing things the way you should be uh, doing the more i get that feeling of insecurity i want to start passing the buck and the question comes whom do i pass the buck to so i have this one two three four close people as a boss i have four subordinates or as a family member or a senior member in the family i have one two three people it may be my spouse it may be my child it may be my soft mother it may be whoever it is so i have this one two three four people who i know that i can start bombarding them and because of my position or because of my seniority or because of the relationship i know that they are not going to counter me like some outsider would do right so i start with that very soon i find that some of them are assertive some of them are not going to take this thing so the moment i keep saying why do you always do this the other person has a very simple logical counter of explain to me why i did this no i am not doing this you have forgotten that that was your responsibility and now you are trying to pass the buck to me the moment i start hearing these type of uh, responses i say no this is dangerous ground so let me look for a softer target and the beauty of it is human nature is such our basic behavior culture and all that is such that there are inevitably some people who love the other person who love me or regard me or respect me 
or even understand that I'm a person in authority, so they cannot really you know, attack me or counter attack what I am doing. And they start taking the brunt of it. Once they start taking the brunt of it, this becomes a habit with this person of what I said, no, passing the buck. I keep on trying to push it on to somebody else. And I have found this one wonderful person who does not hit out at me, who doesn't go and complain about me to others. One very important factor of how the you know persecutor selects the victim is when the victim does not talk about what I'm doing to others. In fact, a lot of victims protect me. Even if somebody asks that, the other day I overheard Ali was shouting at uh, uh, you. I didn't know that, uh, you know, he's so angry or something. No, 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 no. That was because, you know, I made that stupid mistake. And that was nothing. It was part of it. We always shout at each other. and It's nothing. Uh, it's not uh, that. Don't take it seriously. So what is the victim doing? The victim is actually protecting me. And because of that, I'm getting more and more strengthened. Now I know that the victim will not even tell somebody. And the interesting thing uh, is that when the victim is there to even cover up my deficiencies or my behavior, later on, if the victim at some point gets fed up and says, no, you know what Ali has been doing since such a long time. He is doing like this. He oppresses me badly. He keeps always saying, why do you do this? Why do you don't do that? And keeps on doing these uh, um, things. People don't believe him or her. Hey, we have been seeing Ali is such a soft person. He's such a nice person. He's such an understanding person. And even you have always been saying it. Now what's gone wrong with you? And then the victim realizes that I left, uh, you know, hot and cold and... Uh, alone. Now, the other uh, very interesting uh, thing is people saying, I love you. Therefore, I am being nasty to you. Now, what sort of logic is that? But that's what they say. I'm doing it because I love you. You know, I'm doing it because I want to see you improve. I'm doing it in your own interest. I'm doing it so that you don't land up in trouble anywhere else. That's why I'm trying to straighten you uh, out. And they go to such extremes. For example, I have seen cases of domestic violence where the person who is hitting is telling the victim, why do you always provoke me to hit you? Hey, what am I doing? And it's very interesting. Why did you argue with me? Why did you back answer me? That's why I hit you. On some other occasion it is. Why couldn't you have replied? You're sitting like the one uh, dummy. That's why I got provoked and I hit you. So everywhere it is passing the buck and putting it down on to somebody else. The other uh, uh, point which they use is comparison. My mother never did this. Why are you doing uh, uh, this? My father never behaved this way. Why are you behaving like uh, uh, this? I have 50 other people working with me. None of them uh, behave so stupidly as you do. Look at them, how efficient, how do they manage and why is it that you are uh, complaining? So this thing of comparison comes in to further put down the uh, person. And the victim starts developing low self-esteem and the victim starts feeling that will I lose out on this relationship? In official parlance, will I lose this job? At home, will I lose this close relationship? Will I be left, you know, high and right? Taking all these things in mind, the last, you know, hitting point which the persecutor uh, does is, I have done so much for you. So I have a right to scold you. I have a right to put you down. I have a right to be violent with you. I have a right to be critical about you because I have done so much. And that so much very interestingly becomes anything and everything. Whether I have earned money, whether I have done this or whether I have bought a car or whether I have you know, taken care of you when you were sick 
anything and everything becomes like you know a financial transaction i have given you so much money so now you owe me money back the same thing they use in relationships so if it has happened to you in the past try to resolve it just because it is not happening now don't give up so easily and say yeah it was in the past it is done you are carrying that baggage if you have had somebody in your life who used this sort of techniques why do you always do this and kept putting you down even if that person is no longer doing it it has left a scar on you you better do it that is resolve it in your mind you don't have to confront the person the second and equally important is if it is happening to you right now if somebody is treating you in this uh, uh, manner so as usual i've just you know pulled out a few quick bullet points and anis has made it into that beautiful slide here i don't know where she manages to get some good graphics to add spice to those uh, slides anyway so i have this uh, you know about seven or eight uh, simple tips to give you and here we will share it uh, uh, with you the first is do not get brainwashed by repeated accusations do not get pulled down because the same thing is being repeated again and again that is the first one you see the interesting graphic here do not get brainwashed by repeated accusation just because the person has said it 10 times 20 times 50 times does not make it truer or does not make it more you know uh, logical or uh, convincing but there are people who believe in that that if i go on and on and on bombarding the other person like i told you another person who's throwing stones if i continuously keep throwing stone that person has to keep ducking all the time and he will never be able to he's capable he's got stone he can throw one stone at me and break my head but he will not do it for me so please do not get brainwashed by repeated uh, uh, accusations also equally important do not allow them to make you feel guilty their target is somehow to make you feel guilty aren't you ashamed of yourself why do you do these sort of things don't you know how much you are hurting others don't you know what a horrible thing that you are uh, doing now that is used as a means to infuse guilt in you and guilt is a very very destructive emotion i want to caution you in all aspects of life never ever allow guilt to last with you small times yes i should not have done this and i did this i'm feeling bad about it, it is okay but if guilt becomes part of your persona and that is what this person is aiming at because that person says that as long as you are guilty you will never throw a stone back at uh, yourself maybe you take a stone and hit yourself that is what they are uh, aiming uh, at the next uh, one is don't feel that he can't take care of himself i have to do it this is very interesting you know particularly when it comes to personal relationships my father or my mother who is so nasty to me my mother in law my husband my wife my whoever it is is being extremely nasty i have identified that this person is being very nasty but if i break off if i am not kind to this person if i don't take care of this person this person can't take care of himself so i have to do uh, it i am that rescuer and savior and that feeling has been infused into you by that person some people i know of even go to the extent of scolding scolding putting down putting down and at some point when this person says i've had it i can't take it any more and i'm going to walk out or whatever and this person says i'll commit suicide i've had counselors coming and telling me that you know i wanted to leave this person and go away i wanted to cut off relationship with this person but this person said if you leave me i'll commit suicide let me tell you that such people never commit suicide it is a wonderful tool again to make you feel guilty to make you anxious to make you wonder you know what will happen will i be able to live with peace if this person commits suicide and that is 
the tool that they use. The next is, uh, uh, you know, do not try to defend or give logical explanations. It doesn't work. No, last time you were telling me about that, but actually I had already done that task and I had completed it. It was the other person. By the time you are halfway through the sentence, you know, this person realizes that now I'm going to lose out because this person is giving logical. That is what is wrong with you. You don't even accept your fault when I'm trying to point it out to you. Instead of listening to me and improving yourself, you know what you're doing? You're trying to defend yourself. As long as you keep doing that, how will you improve? God, your logical you know, answer and your way of your attempt to try to make the other person understand and all that is wiped out. So in such situations, do not defend yourself or give explanations. Let the person rave and rant. So what is it that I can uh, do? Ask him for explanation. Oh, is that what you feel? What were those occasions you said? You said, no, that I always do this, this, this badly. I just want some clarification on that. Which was the last time that uh, you felt this way? What exactly do you mean that, uh, you know, I did this uh, wrong or I did not succeed in that or whatever? I want to know from you. You're knowledgeable, no? You said that you're very clear and you have formed this opinion about me. Yes, I will respect your opinion. I want the moment you put the ball back in his court, he has to justify. And believe me, in most such cases, he can't. So learn to use I statements when you're responding. Instead of giving logical answers, you say, I feel very upset when you say things like this. And I want some peace of mind. I want some space. I'm also human. I also make mistakes. I acknowledge, but I cannot be scolded. The more yeah, this keeps happening to me, the more demotivated I will get. So you notice what the, you have done is you have not pointed fingers at him to make him defensive. You are saying, I feel bad. I feel pulled down. My motivation goes away and that diffuses the situation in many cases. I'm not saying you will always succeed, but in many cases you will you know, succeed. Tell him, don't compare. I have my limitation. I told you, know, my mother always does this. Why can't you do this? Or my other colleague uh, uh, subordinate does it. Why can't you do that? So that is where you have to say, please don't compare. I have my good points. I have my bad points. Everybody has. So in my case, this is what I'm going to do. I would prefer that you tell me what I am supposed to do and we'll deal with that, not with, you know, what the others are doing. And one thing that sometimes helps is to quote others who praise you. I have this family member or I have this person in office or I have this colleague or so-and-so who has pointed out that they are very happy with the work that I have done. So you see these slides which I made, I showed it to two of my colleagues, you know, and they said that you've done a wonderful job of it. So they were praising me. Okay, you don't like my slides, it's fine, I'll accept it. I'm willing to, you know, work it out with you and decide how to improve on it or whatever it is. But also remember that there are other people. I want you to understand that, that there are people who accept my behavior, who in fact praise the way I do uh, things. So please understand that it's a matter of opinion. After all these efforts, if nothing works, which can happen, I want to caution you straight away. But many people will say, I've tried all these things for days and years, nothing has happened. This person continues to be nasty. Yes, there are people who do that. We will not go into the causes and what happens and how. But I just want to tell you that if nothing works, Insulate yourself, if not physically, at least mentally and emotionally. And that is something which is in your control. Nobody can dictate your thoughts. Nobody can decide on your behalf whether you want to be happy or sad or whatever it is. So when you work out in such a way that you insulate yourself, let the person keep raving, ranting, let the 
violence or unpleasantness continue, you start thinking of better things to do. So with this thought, I'll leave you for a minute with Seema, who's going to give you one or two very important uh, quick announcements. And I'll enjoy my cup of tea quickly and get back to you in just a minute. Fascinating, right? Human behavior. Wow. Amazing tips. I mean, just look at this. Uh, we don't even realize how things happen in the main in the name of love. So much controlling, manipulation, just amazing. Week after week, you uh, listen to various uh, you know talks on uh, human behavior and uh, imbibing this can really uh, enrich your life, make it wonderful. You know how to deal with self and others. And that's exactly what our Diploma in Counseling Skills program also aims to do. Not only is it to become a professional counselor, but also to actually start living an empowered life. Imagine if you're able to deal with all of this on a day-to-day -day basis, how wonderful life can be. You can so much be at peace, right? Like Ali says, no? Uh, mental, good mental health, how do you know? Peace within, harmony with others. That's exactly what you can achieve. So Diploma in Counseling Skills, uh, already three teams have started off. One more team, the last team is starting on Tuesday, 19th. That is a 4.30 to 6.30 uh, batch. So if you know of anybody who would like to, uh, you know, it's a part-time uh, part thing. So it's just twice a week. So anybody from any profession, working professionals or homemakers, anybody can take this up. So a lot of self-growth and development. And we are saying it out of, you know, we've all gone through the program. And uh, that's that's the way, you know, uh, uh, that is why life is easier uh, comparatively. Because now probably we learn, know how to deal with a lot of these relationship issues and, uh, you know, other behavior uh, issues. So, yes, uh, this is uh, the program. Uh, if you want, we are opening uh, the, the admissions for a little more time. So that's it. And we will get uh, started. We're going a little slow also this month. Next month onwards, it's going to be uh, full of this thing. And we'll be closing admissions uh, slowly, uh, shortly. So do reach out uh, for that. And another important thing is that, uh, fine, if you're busy, you are traveling, you can't make it uh, this year, uh, you know, for the course or the program, you can also come of course, for free counseling, but you can also be a volunteer with Banjara. We have a helping hand arm, so we can tell you more about it. In fact, every third Thursday of a month, Ali does a talk, a HH talk, helping hand talk. And uh, this time it is enriching life through empathy. So please come, you can just walk in. It's a, it's a talk from 11, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock every third Thursday. So this uh, Thursday, we are having it on 21st. You're most welcome. Come by about uh, 9.45. Aram se come meet other people and attend the talk. So, and uh, you can also become a volunteer. So these are some quick things happening here in Banjara. Yes, I'm back and I'm glad that I have been able to provoke your thoughts enough so that the questions have started coming in. All the others, please feel free to ask any question into the chat box. There is no such thing as a stupid question. There are only stupid answers, which I may give you. Okay. So let me start with Netra who says, can you talk about indirect threatening to control the victim? For example, if someone was in my place, they would have slapped you or hit you. Yes. This is another thing. Like I told you about, you know, I love you. That's why I'm saying this. I care for you. I have been so nice to you. So here comes this very indirect uh, type of uh, uh, thing, which says that, you know, I am being nice to you. You're lucky that you've got me. If in my place, uh, you know, somebody else was uh, there, they would have done this, this, this. 
to you they would have slapped you or they would have hit you i am only scolding you so you see how again the person is bringing in third persons to try to browbeat you in fact again the same guilt or whatever you want to call it is the factor that remember that i am being nice to you i am pointing this out in your own uh, interest so like i told you about the comparing factor that you know don't compare me with others if you feel that it might have an impact you can tell the person i will deal with the other people who may hit me who may slap me it's okay uh, i'm uh, you know willing to face whatever it is which other people uh, do i'm not concerned about other people but you are important to me i want to discuss with you and i want to have a good relationship with you so keep bringing the conversation back to you and me doesn't matter yes there are bad people there are nasty people i go out on the road and somebody may uh, hit me that doesn't mean that i'm going to stop walking on the road right but here it's a different matter you are important to me i want to sort out and improve our uh, relationship take up that stand and see whether it uh, um, helps okay there are questions about the course and the fees which uh, sima will answer individually to those who have uh, uh, asked anyway it is a uh, one year that means a nine month uh, uh, program fees and all that of course she'll tell you but the main thing is that it's very flexible there's no exam there's no theory and it's it's a joy it's actually an experiential uh, learning that's why we are telling this to you not because we are trying to sell something to you as sima said that if you don't want to do any course or something you're still welcome come and attend our free lectures on third thursdays come and become a volunteer with uh, us it's very fulfilling to do that and in all these things there's no money or fees or anything that is uh, you know um, involved in these uh, uh, matters along with uh, uh, this i just wanted to you know share uh, uh with you another uh, simple factor which people uh, generally bring it the acronym of that is called i i w f y i i w f y this is used quite frequently in the western countries if you expand that i i w f y it reads if it weren't for you if it were not for you meaning to say you are the trouble maker you are the person who creates problems if it weren't for you i would have been leading a happy life if it weren't for you our team would have been doing very uh, well if it weren't for you everything would have been so smooth and nice so everything boils down to you as an individual that's why i told you that people who get into this you know notion of why do you always do this they somehow try to isolate you from others they try to make you feel that you are the only miserable failure who is doing all these horrible things and that is why one of the things in the slide that i told you uh, was don't compare me with others i have my limitations but i will do whatever i can please explain what you meant by this 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 can you describe what is it that i did wrong which is making you so upset can you tell me how it could have been done uh, better even when this comparison comes in know that other uh, people are doing so well you are the only stupid person who not doing it yeah i don't mind learning uh, from their method just tell me what are the techniques that they use what is their behavior uh, uh, pattern if you have a few minutes just explain that to me inevitably you will notice if this person is not genuine and he was just trying to put you down why should i bother telling you you should know what it is can't you see for yourself why should i take the trouble of doing this because you always do these horrible uh, things when the person does that i want you to understand that you are not at fault when that episode is over when this person has been giving you this horrible nasty comments whatever it is as i said as far as possible try to first mentally emotionally disconnect yourself at that moment see that you don't get provoked 
the worst thing that would happen is that if you get provoked and you start you know throwing the ball back and never try to do things which a lot of people do unfortunately what about you what do you think you are doing do you feel that you are so perfect and that provokes the person so much that the person can go to any extreme end to be nasty to you always avoid doing uh, uh, that ha surekha has asked a very nice question how do we build an emotional wall around indifferent uh, uh, people so i have this person who is important to me or let's say the part of my family or whatever it is so i can't physically insulate myself if it's just a friend who is being all the time critical and nasty or even being indifferent to me putting me down or you know, giving importance to others but not uh, you know acknowledging what i am doing if i have a friend like that it's not all that difficult maybe i what i can do is stop connecting with that friend if that friend happens to be part of a social group also even there it's not that difficult because of that person you can just disassociate from that social group and move into some other uh, uh, group right up to if you have such a horrible person whom you can't get rid of in the office you can even change your job or your department or whatever it is but the question that uh, surekha has asked applies a lot to people who you cannot physically get away from for whatever the reason the most important being is their family members right now if that happens how do you build this emotional uh, wall so anticipate when this person is going to make these nasty remarks there's always a trigger you will actually if you develop that uh, sixth sense or that intuition as we say you will get that feeling now is the time this person is going to start off with something nasty this person is now provoked and based on my previous experiences once this person gets provoked the person just lashes out at me okay so i am getting ready for it simplest ways of getting ready we have discussed this earlier also take a deep breath close your eyes and meditate for a minute excuse yourself and say i'll just go to the washroom and come back wash your face drink a glass of water sounds very simple but it empowers you it strengthens you to face that barrage which is now going to come from this unreasonable uh, person the second thing is that look at the person with a most neutral expression on your face no fear no anger no hesitation no you know feeling of that i am going to attack you or no feeling of anxiety or panic if you can develop that nothing like it they say no that uh, 55% of communication is visual and 38% is the tone in which uh, you express it's only 8% is the uh, text of what you say so if you can develop this practice it's it, it is difficult i don't deny it. it's not something you can pick up overnight but it helps you in a lot of situations that whenever somebody is being unreasonable for whatever reason if you can develop this habit of making straight eye contact and keeping a neutral expression on your face then once the moment is over you recap and say what this person said is not right that's what i said no the guilt factor he's trying to make me feel guilty he's trying to put me down but i know what is right if possible talk to another third person who is genuine and who cares for you and ask do you think i am this 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 that person will say no i don't think you are doing this i think you are a nice person no whatever it is the moment you start getting that you are starting to build up that wall between you and this nasty uh, character and then have that feeling of you know literally compassion or pity that this person is such a miserable creature that this person has to take the help of attacking others just to redeem himself it's a very sad situation to be in but i can't change him and that's very important i told you no that he can't take care of himself so that's why i have to do this that prevents you from uh, you know building that emotional wall you say that this person is an if it's a small child of course then you have to uh, protect but you have to ensure 
that you use all these ways and means and uh, 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 techniques. We also have a good question by uh, Roshan. And uh, she said that every time I'm blamed that because of you, my life has been miserable. I try to insulate myself and keep calm, not get provoked instead of giving a positive stroke so that in future, no such statements are uh, uh, passed. Yes, Roshan, if you have succeeded in that, congratulations to you. At the same time, I want to caution the others that it may not be always po uh, possible. So you remain calm, you give a positive stroke, but the person continues making statements. Be mentally prepared for that. Some people don't give up so easily. And they have identified you as the one and only person or maybe one out of one or two people whom they can keep on attacking, right? So they are not going to give that up so easily. And a wonderful thing is what Lata is saying, telling us. I treat such people like the weather. So I always say, no, that if you are the type of person who can enjoy all the weathers, right now it is monsoon and it is raining and we are having this deluge of uh, uh, rain, enjoy that. The rain will get over after a few months and then the winter will come. Enjoy that. There are people who perpetually complain about the weather and there are people who you know, anticipate, enjoy every weather. The same thing applies to human relationships. Gayatri is asking what makes people nasty, mean, hurtful. It could be a number of reasons, Gayatri. The person may be suffering from low self-esteem. So before somebody points out my mistakes, let me start attacking the person. The somebody, somebody can be, uh, you know, even uh, be a narcissist, as we call it who is so focused on himself and his own well-being and this I'm okay, you are not okay type of stand that, you know, he makes it a mission in life to hurt others. In some rare cases, it can also be a personality disorder. The person cannot control his anger. The person cannot think logically. In some extreme cases, it may be that the person has had such horrible experiences himself or herself that I want to now impose it on you. Something like Saas bhi kabhi bahuthi. If a lady suffers, suffers, suffers as a daughter-in-law and finally she becomes a mother-in-law, normally you would expect that she'll be very nice to her daughter-in-law. No? She'll have that empathy and she'll say, see, I have suffered so much, so I should be nice. No, there are times when she takes out all the frustration of the past 30 years and she starts making life miserable for her daughter-in-law. So these are some of the causes. We have to look at it from an individual uh, point of uh, view. Navina says that the technique of visualization about indifferent people changing along with I becoming strong and responding rather than reacting helps. Yes, Navina, there are a lot of people who use visualization as a very nice technique. Visualization, mindfulness. I'm not going into the details of what they are exactly. Maybe we'll have a session on that some other uh, time. But to many people, visualization helps, meditation uh, helps, mindfulness uh, um, helps. Okay. Ah, Saraf Saab is saying in modern era, both life partners are earning. It's most time okay whenever man earns more than women. But if the wife earns more than the husband, she lets him down even in front of his relatives. What is the remedy to it. I would not like to generalize, but what I am saying is that we have to look beyond that simple factor of earning more. Somewhere, has she got some low self-esteem? Has she got a bloated ego? Has she suffered in some other area so that she wants to take it out now that she's earning more? She wants to point that out and use it as a tool to put the other person down. So we need to evaluate and understand that lady now, between husband and wife, how does it make a difference? Both of them are running for the family, isn't it? So logically speaking, she should be happy that not only my husband's income is there, my income, and now I'm earning more than him. So we have this wonderful uh, income. Even if she wants to be a little selfish, she can say that, no, I will put my money in the bank account. We'll run the household with you and whatever it is. But to show off and to put the other person down, you know, the husband saying that I'm earning more than you, there is something you know, bugging her from inside. We need to understand uh, that, right? 
Ah, Ridhi says, how to deal with a family member gaslighting you in front of other family members by saying that she is scared of you to build a good image in front of uh, others. In front of others, if you can start off by the, you know, what we call as disarming. Look at the person straight, as I told you, without an expression. Hear the person out. Nod your head. Oh, I see. This is what you think. Okay. Okay. And then smile at the person and say, Basically, I want to clarify that I do not mean anything wrong. I do not have any intentions. Now, unintentionally, if I am scaring you or something, I'm very open to change. So now that our friends or our family members are here, can you just describe a few incidents where you got scared of me? We'll start off right now by putting things right. Now, those third persons whom this person was trying to impress or trying to you know, turn against you, they will immediately say, hey, this person is acknowledging, this person is willing to change. And if that person who accused you does not have anything concrete to say, the whole argument sort of fizzles off. Surika says a counselee has a spouse who is critical, controlling, verbally abusive, even though he is far away abroad. She is unwilling to move out because of the social stigma. Yes, in a lot of our families, in all of the situations, we don't, as you know, people who believe in our culture and tradition, we don't walk out of relationships so easily. Forget about husband, wife. At times, you know, a child doesn't walk out of an abusive parent's uh, um, house, even though he or she may be earning and grown up. But the fact that remains is, that the same thing has to be done. In fact, <coughs> since the abuse is ab uh, abuser is abroad, this wife can learn these techniques of you know calming down, visualization, and all that because, because it becomes easier. This person is not physically present before you. So you know that at this, this, this time you're going to have a telephonic conversation with this person. Prepare yourself. Learn how to be normal. And even including you have another outlet. In case things are getting very nasty at that moment, we use the standard technique, which we say, no, hello, can't hear you, network and problems, connection and cut off, gain time, gather yourself and get back to the conversation again, right? Okay, so Vijay Lakshmi says, third person is not judgmental. He will become mirror to me and will help me to understand better of myself in that situation. That's what happens. Most third persons, as we call them, are basically neutral uh, persons. Just because that third person seems to be siding with the oppressor, don't label that person on that. A lady, for example, may have a nasty mother-in-law. And she may feel that father-in-law always supports his wife. So he also hates me. He also doesn't like me. But the father-in-law at this age or this stage of his life may say that if I go against my wife, it's going to create a lot of problems for me. So I better keep nodding my head to whatever my wife uh, says and keep away from it. So once you know that and when you get an opportunity on a one-to-one -one basis to talk to him, find out what he feels about the situation, find out about what he feels about you, you will have gained a friend. Even though the person may not openly come out in your favor, but you will have that assurance that, yes, I know that my father-in-law does not think negative of me. It is just because of his circumstances that he is supporting his wife. I'm just giving an example. There are so many of them like that. Okay. Ha, ah, Surika says, how can we help a counselee deal with obsessive anxiety? Now, these are two different things. One is anxiety. If a person has too much of anxiety, worrying about the future, Worrying about what is going to happen, always looking at negative things. On top of that, if this person has an obsessive personality, that is, when he or she takes up something, the person goes on and on and on thinking about it. Now, these things have to be dealt with in a slightly professional manner. Because this person has two issues. One is that he or she has become obsessive. And the other is the person is suffering from anxiety, which in extreme cases can even go up to panic attacks and things like that. So I will not give you a generalized answer. We have to understand this person and help him or her at an individual basis. 
Roshan says nothing is permanent. Everything will change for the better. I believe sincerely in this. Please keep spreading this message to everyone else, Roshan. K Sara Sara, you know that, no? Whatever will be, will be. The future is not ours to see. Something or the other will happen which will bring about. If you have that optimism in you, that's another great tool which will help you to tide over, to tolerate and to bear with this negativity which is coming from this person who is you know, putting you down all the uh, time. Ah, Yasmin says, I love that example of network not reaching me. Hello, hello, I can't reach you. That's what I mean. Uh, I said it in a lighthearted manner, but we can use ways and means to insulate ourselves. Don't feel compelled that you have to all the time keep listening to the person. Okay. Madhvi says, uh, uh, I was thinking and facing these consequences at easy. It's part of human nature because, as you told, we have no control on natural weather calamity. Same with human nature, we cannot run away to face it. So before we wind up, I just wanted to tell you that we missed last Saturday for the simple reason that I was invited to a wonderful educational group of institutions in a place called Brahmavar, which is in Urupi district. And we landed up there when nature was at its worst fury. The cart roads were blocked down, the waves. So we went to the beach and we saw it was almost looking as though the waves will come and uh, grab and eat us up. And it was raining. 24 by 7, all the three days that we were uh, uh, there. So even those things teach us something about life. But the only difference is nature does not you know, attack somebody individually. The waves or the rain doesn't look for somebody and say, I'm going to drown only this person. That's the sad part about human uh, uh, beings. Human beings tend to look for the softest target. And there is a proverb which says that equally important not to, you know, do injustice is not to tolerate injustice. There are ways and means of doing it. I'm not saying that you should fight a war or whatever it is. There are softer ways. There are long-term ways of doing uh, uh, it and we should do it. Okay. Uh, Navina says when we work on ourselves, on our emotions, Responding becomes easier and empathizing with the other person is also easy. Yes, I mean, this um, uh, factor of empathy that you uh, brought out, I think that is a very, very important uh, area. In fact, next Thursday in our classroom talk, we are going to have that helping and talk. I'm going to talk about, you know, using empathy to enrich your own uh, life. So this is one part of it, what Namina said just now, that working on ourselves, on our emotions, and then, you know, understanding other people's emotions, dealing with other people, life really becomes good, if, including on today's topic, that is, you know, how do you handle these people who are so uh, abrasive, who are so negative, who keep targeting you? Somewhere empathy plays a very important role. Going beyond what he is saying to go into why he is saying. That's the simplest rancho definition of empathy. Looking for the why beyond the what. Believe me, that itself brings down to some extent at least the frustration and the anger and whatever you are uh, uh, facing. So with that, as we are touching upon the uh, bang of uh, uh, 12 noon, I just wanted to tell you next week, I picked up something which is again very dear to my heart, that is Connecting education to real life. You know, what is education and what is our real life? What do we select and do? Every second person today wants to be a software engineer, but how does it determine your life and where it happens? I want you to think over, talk to people about the education that they have had, about the life that they are leading, about the profession that they are in. Get some inputs in the next one week and join us on Saturday when we are going to have an open discussion. I would like to have as many comments as many suggestions and ideas as possible about how, you know, the connection between the formal education that we go through and our real life. So see you next Saturday. Bye-bye and see you soon.
thank you all please join us next saturday 11 o'clock on that topic and if you can put on the poster <laughs> i was just reading out <laughs> connecting education to real life and also come over on thursday for the talk enriching life uh, through empathy so these are the two things coming up and of course dcs is on so that is the third thing we wanted to convey thank you bye bye see you next saturday